Good morning. And an absolutely beautiful morning we're having here in the Southern Cape this morning. This morning I've got a tree. Uh, it's an indigenous tree. It's a species that I love extremely much, a lot. And um, they not very good bonsai material. Um, you won't find that I don't think I, th yeah, I don't know of anyone else that's got them as bonsai. They do not bonsai well. Um, to give you an idea, one of my friends uh, who is a very well-known bonsai artist in the area is quite a hardcore bonsai dude. Um, he said to me the other day that he had one for 10 years that he tried to develop and he eventually uh, chucked it, threw it away. So uh, this is a book a note in Afrikaans. Um, I think in English it's a, a Cape Beach, Cape Beach, and um, its botanical name is uh, sure I can't remember. Um, Rapanea melana flus, Rapanea melana flus, Cape Beach, Corps uh, of note. So this tree i took out of the ground it was growing in a you know odd space um in the forest and i know it wouldn't have made it over there so i just dug it out uh one day and uh it's four years ago and um and i added in this uh, in this little plastic training pot that you can see is now broken um, I've had it in here all the time and I've asked some experts some advice on these trees because um, you can see that all I've done with this tree it's grown and it grows straight like this and then I cut it cut it back and then I do get back budding lower down but they don't they don't um, ramif ramify uh, ramificate at all really so um, I've been feeding this tree now quite a bit giving it some organic fertilizer watering it putting it in the sun and if you look closely I hope I can show you here but I've got one two they make these beautiful pink buds there is on the tip there's one two three four buds on this, um, this little side branch over there I've got another little bud so my plan for this tree now today I just want to get it on record because I'm really gonna try um, and I, I think um, the advice that I got from from a gentleman who's also uh, I consider him a, a bonsai expert um, he said to me instead of pruning it and clipping it and trying to shape it now as a young tree because I think in total this tree might be Probably I took it out as a three, uh, one year old seedling, took it out three years ago. So it's probably around about four years old. But if you look, I mean, it's got a really cool, um, I mean, obviously I, as I grew it, I had soil mount, mounted up. And as I grew it, I, I gradually um, exposed the roots. There's this gnarly, cool looking root growing straight down uh, below the first curve. It's um, as it curves to the right, that's anchoring it down, and um, it's quite an interesting root root ball there, root base. Um, nice nabari, I like it. I mean, I, I, I can't throw it away. Um, it's it's alive, and yeah, why not? We might as well just try and make the best of the situation. So my plan for today is, um, I've got it in a sandy, organic. Um, substrate here medium that uh, retains a lot of moisture um, it's not all that bad for this tree they can handle it they grow in um, you know in river next to rivers in the indigenous forest here in the in the southern cape and um, and they like they like uh, water so but I'm gonna change it out to a little bit more of an inorganic um, substrate so I'm gonna be mixing perlite and I'm gonna be using um, baked clay pellets lecker um, 
and as well as a little bit of fine pine bark just a little bit and then some again a little bit of river sand but a little bit more coarse than this um, this time around so my plan is here to develop the roots more so that this tree can bud out grow much more aggressively um, you know, I'll leave it to its own devices I'll wire branches they do do wire well respond to wiring you can see there's a this this wire I now put on recently just to anchor this this branch over here so that's the old bin that I put in the in the tree there and um, it's gonna grow nicely now this season springs on its way which is very exciting and um, my plan is to just put it in this clay in this clay training pot I bought this pot like bought a couple of them 10 years ago from a nursery dirt cheap and I've been shopping around for these pots and they've gotten really expensive um, but yeah very nice clay just a cheap clay terapot uh, or terracotta training pot there so I'm going to plant that tree in here it's going to get more roots developing grow more aggressively and um, I think that's the only way I'm really going to give this tree a good chance to to um, you know the closest I'll get to to be, be able to make it a bonsai um, I can see there's healthy roots growing out the bottom nice white roots these roots these roots I haven't taken it out this spot, so I'm going to do that now and let's see what the root system looks like. bunch of roots um, you can see literally just the inch uh, to an inch and a half of soil that it's been growing in at the time when I potted it I put some mesh in which was probably not the best idea because now all of my roots and I actually I didn't want to do a root prune on this thing because my motive here is to let it grow as strong as possible. Uh, I see I did put quite a coarse layer of this was three years ago, so I don't I always remember what I use as soil. Hey, this thing is I'm gonna break those new feeder roots unfortunately. So they they have broken off, but look at that. It's a piece of Piece of mesh draining mesh it wasn't necessary to put this in I don't know why I, well I know why because I had this fine um, substrate this is a zeolite that I use um, it retains quite a lot of moisture um, it's an excellent replacement um, for all these fancy things akadama and pumice and whatnot so um, really enjoy using using um, zeolite excellent water retention um, draws up gases in the soil and um, free draining obviously because it's a, it's a grit doesn't break down doesn't decompose this has been in here for for three years but i mixed it in with a little bit of um, organic compost but um, yeah anyway so i lost some roots there but there's still a healthy amount of of roots um, I'm gonna be taking some of this moss off the top here and just lightly scrape the moss moss off it's a nice moss I'm gonna be planting that in another pot maybe just give it a light comb try and not disturb too much roots but try and get a little bit of the organic organic matter out here Just 
thing is still focused. Alright. So yes, the reason for this video I'm, I'm making, I just I just sort of, you know, hearing from the experts saying, you know, I'm wasting my time with a tree like this. Um, and I'm one of those people <laughs> I like to prove other people wrong. So it's just um yeah, considering it as a challenge. So um I'm gonna let this baby grow as as aggressive as I can and even not shape it as much and make it look like any sort of traditional bonsai shape. Um I just want it to grow in this spot. And um they don't they don't really have a nice or beautiful um, structure when they grow in nature for probably the first 40 50 years but after that when they mature and they start developing a, a canopy then then they are really beautiful trees but it's really seldom that you see those massive ancient um, book of notes so um, I'll just leave this thing to grow help it a little bit where I can but I'm going to stop pruning it for the next call it five years I'll just um, I'll just wire branches and and you know try and develop so yeah I just I'm not I don't have a clue what I'm what I'm what I've got planned for this tree um, I'm just gonna go with the flow um, so yeah there's a healthy root mat like I said and and I'm actually quite stoked um, to see it's quite gritty there's it's not it's not logged with with organic matter too much got enough healthy roots so i'm gonna grab my pot here and i'm um, just gonna rig it quick so all i'm doing with this poichi i'm not putting any wire in i'm just taking this piece of mesh dropping it over the one hole in the middle seen that a million times then I've got this Leco it's a expanded clay baked clay I'll just drop a little just drop a little first layer of those guys in just to promote some oxygen know to those bottom feeder roots um, and because um, that is a small draining hole it's not the ideal I would have liked if there was like about four bigger you know four big holes in it I like drainage I like oxygen in the root system so that's why I'm putting that in there this will aerate the, the, the lower part of the pot um, and ultimately give us a healthier root ball at the end of the day and I just quickly want to give you a rundown of what my boy, uh, bonsai soil looks like. So what I mix into my bonsai soil, this is a nice coarse river sand. That's part one. And then I've got a whole bunch of this expanded clay balls I do sieve, sieve the bigger ones out and um, these are the bigger ones and then I use the smaller ones the bigger ones I use for whatever anything else and then everyone knows perlite good old perlite I, I use a whole bunch of this and then last but not the least some fine sifted uh, pine pine bark and once I finally mixed all those goodies together, my substrate looks like this. Nice, coarse, free draining, crunchy goodness. And so um, I've got no specific um, ratios uh, I just sort of eyeball it wing it I've been doing it so many times that I know exactly how much and I mix it with a hand and then I see okay I need a little bit of this or a little bit of that until I'm happy with 
with um, the consistency of it and obviously as I plant different things um, I might add a little bit of organic compost here a little bit more finer sand here or even sometimes a little bit of fine peat moss for better water retention even vermiculite um, all depending on what I plant or what mix that I'm mixing but this is my general mix for for everything I use I get excellent water retention with the um, Leica clay um, I haven't showed you the zeolite that I planted that I've used you can see the zeolite in between this organic matter there those um, yellow brownish uh, granules um, I don't have zeolite at the moment I'll be getting soon and then I'll start using that as well um, but yeah generally that's that's what my mix um, looks like and then I'll get a healthy amount on top of that first layer of Lekker rock so I want some space in the bottom of this pot some space for the roots to develop get a really aggressive root ball to allow the upper part of this tree to grow because you know I've got to prove someone wrong <laughs> So yeah, I'm filling the pot three quarter way up. Let me see. If I stick this baby, I'm going to have to trim the root ball ever so slightly, but not a lot. I can put a little bit more soil mix in. Actually, I think I'm going to take some of the old mix, the mix that it was used to. Just mix a little bit of that zeolite in. Actually, nothing wrong with that stuff. the tree there I'm gonna just take my scissor help the corners take the corners away to help the root ball just go in so I'm mounding the center up a little bit because I do where I lost those roots I do have a a hollow section there and there and also the concavement in that training pot you can see that so I'm making a nice mound in the center placing my root mat tree in and I'm gonna get a tight fit I'm not too worried about uh, the placement in the pot but let's have a look and actually, by accident, it looks like I just nailed it. That's perfect, if I may say so myself. Very happy with that. So I'm going to squeeze this boy down. in don't want to compress these top feeder roots too much keep them a little bit aerated taking some of this beautiful stuff and um, just sprinkling it on top and around and then you take a chopstick preferably preferably a whole one um, but this is all I got now I tend to break these things And then I'm just going to go in on the sides, really work my perlite, lecker, river sand, and pine bark.
into the sides. Um, I'm going to go into the house, get a fresh chopstick with a pointier tip and just lightly work it in everywhere. Just lightly work it in and um, aerate that, that, that matty root ball. It's not a very thick root ball, so there shouldn't be too much aeration uh, necessary. But um, I will just still stick it in a little bit and work some of this river sand and some of this fine, um, this beautiful lekker baked clay pellets will work in there. To make sure there's no air pockets. roots exposed to the top I like it sitting a little bit proud in the spot um, it allows me creates more space for my root development lower down in the spot because that's ultimately what I want on this tree like I mentioned and um, so I'm going to put be putting a nice mat of moss over this guy and um, so I'm going to pause this video I'm going to get some moss I'll do do the full Monty with this guy and there's still a other couple of steps things I want to do with this tree that I also want to record because ultimately um, I want to come back in 10 years time and um, show my friends that it's not a tree to be tossed out of the bonsai collection. All right, so I've got some moss, a whole bunch of it. Um, I found a piece, some moss growing on a old piece of pine bark it's some sphagnum moss mixed with these three different other types and there's this flat flat sort of thing it grows and it makes this very dense root carpet um, I, I really don't like it it's like it smothers the trees um, I'm not sure what the name is of that that flat flat leaf it's definite I don't know maybe it is a, a sort of a moss there it is that thing don't like it so I pull them out as far as I go so I'm going to put this piece of bark with that moss with that piece of sphagnum moss put that there under the base of the tree that moss looks so happy on that piece of <laughs> on that piece of bark there There's some more sphagnum. I'm no moss expert, but I all I know is I really, really dig moss. Gotta love moss. Anyways. Spread the mosses out. I'll get the the weeds later. And the nice thing about moss, you can just you just pack it pack it loosely like this, and then you bring your your, your water spray bottle, and you lightly spray it. And as you spray it, you just lightly dab it down with the fingers, and then um, it settles into place. And just keep it moist on the top, and within a couple of weeks, you know, if you don't allow it to dry out. You'll have a really cool uh, you know, layer of ground cover of nice moss. The perlite between the moss, the white perlite, doesn't look all that pretty right now, but that's cool. They, um, the moss grows over it, sort of like engulfs it. <laughs> moss likes perlite, grows into it, and the, and the, and the perlite eventually goes green completely so yeah we have got some moss moss we're gonna get some water and I'm gonna water this baby in I'm just gonna take put back my anchoring wire here 
So the small little side branch I see now in the crotch there, I'm getting another bud. I want to maybe pull this. I don't want to pull it too far, just might break it. Um, but I want this coming down a little bit, a little bit more forward because I'm getting a bud there. So I want to go low down so that I create this low branching on this tree. I've got a little, I found a little tip. Take a piece of um, aluminium wire or copper wire. You just clip it with your pliers on an angle so you make two pointy things. And um, you stick it into the bark of the tree. It gives it minimal scourage. Uh, sorry about that. So you sort of stick it in the bark. You pull your other branch down. And it sort of sticks into it. And it's quite firm and solid. And um, it'll keep it there. And once you take that wire away, it's not a you know, a cut or wire bite because the thing is you can see with the, with the old wiring I did there is wire scars running up and the wire weren't on ever in growing season it grows really fast and it's not easy to get the branches set it's probably also one of the reasons why it's not such a sought after um, tree for bonsai so a native to South Africa they only grow here and um, I don't think there's much people um, anywhere in the world that's got bonsai of a Cape Beach. If there is, please let me know. I'd love, I'd love to see, to see if someone else has made bonsai out of out of Cape Beach. But this is my attempt, and now I've, I think I've done what I wanted. Got it in the deeper pot. Gonna get a aggressive root system on this thing just gonna go in with a camera and I just want to show you look at those buds buds new buds developing so this tree is quite healthy it's been um, a long winter and um, we're still in for some cold spells so it's not over yet but um yeah so they do look like this in winter but I think this thing's gonna grow I want more branches on it it's just a 2D sort of stick at the moment, but um, I see in the crotch, like I said, there's two buds coming out. I'll even use one of those crotch branches, the one to the, there's a little one. Uh, there's a little, little pink one over there. And um, bring that branch in here, get three branches going. Let the stuff grow. Let it grow. Let the trunk thicken up. And um, sure to do an update in a year's time. Maybe even shorter if this thing really performs well in this spot. Right, so I grabbed some water. No repotting videos done. If it uh, get watered. I'm wetting that moss and just squeezing it into place. Slightly dabbing it. And I really like what I see. The water that I pour on pulls in straight away, even though that hole's quite small at the bottom, it drains out well. So there's our moss ground cover starting developing. There's that nice chunk of pine, big pine bark with some moss on. And I'll give this tree a nice watering a little bit later on today as well. What I really like about this book and note, I don't know if you can really see it on the camera, but it's got this beautiful purple pink uh, dark purple 
uh, almost like maroon um, leaf stems and then these new buds that's developing they come out pink and when the new leaves come they're also this pink color and these leaves are big they're big and i don't think they'll ever ever get, get smaller um, i'm not defoliating this tree or anything like that to get smaller leaves i'm not desperate um, for performance yeah i just i just want this tree to grow as aggressively as it can so there we go thank you for watching and i'm really excited to do an update on this baby in the future rapanea melena flus cape beach kaapse boeken out